Okay, so here's this next part. Um, so everyone decided wants to come to America for some reason. So I know in the next week or so, Teen Top is going to be coming to the States. AMG is going to be doing their tour in the States. BAP starting their tour on the 14th of April. Got Seven is going to be coming like July. Um, Shiny, they also announced that Shiny's having a fan meeting in Chicago in May. So like I said, everyone is just hopping their asses over here to America to go on tour. And it's like, ain't nobody got money for all that. So it's like, of course, if I had it like that, I would go to everybody. But I don't got money like that. So I really don't, I, I highly doubt I'm going to go to any of them. Like, it's going to suck because I, this would be like my fifth time missing Jay Park. And I'm not going to see BAP because something tells me the fact that it's at the PlayStation Theater. I hate that fucking place. Um, and after what happened last year, I kind of don't want to go because of that. It's just, I don't know what's going to, the whole vibe's going to be like next year. And I mean, you know, this year from like last year, move, man. And um, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. Because last year was a mess and I don't got time for that shit. So I'm not going to go. Maybe got seven. I, I don't know. I don't know. I want to, but then I don't. But hopefully I can go to KCON this year because it's in June. But it's at the end of June. So it gives me time to like make a decision. And it's like, I, if anything, I'll go to one in Newark because I'm not going away to LA. It's too damn expensive. But um, I guess you know. But if you don't know, KCON is coming back to the States this year they're going to be in LA at the Staples Center again in July the end of July for three days and they're coming to Newark um, in the end of June for two days so it's going to be in Newark at the Potential Center just like it was last year but it's two days this time um, and the thing that I like about it this time that it's not right behind each other because last year when they had KCON KCON LA was first and it was like the end of July and then the one in Jersey was like the beginning of August so you really pretty much had like a week between each other where this year you have a month so you can decide you know if you want to go to one or both so you don't have to like rush to you know get your stuff together so it gives you time to you know take a breather before the next one but I'm really excited that they're coming back. I'm, I'm just a little nervous the fact that they're coming to Newark because out in Newark is a little, a little crazy in Newark these days. So I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully they decide to behave themselves that day. But uh, I'm really exciting. I'm hoping that you know that the uh, the lineup was better than last year because last year was like. Uh, it was I. I mean, I can see I got to see Girls' Generation. That's still surprising to me because I never thought I'd see them in concert. But, um, <clears throat> and not, you know, I could see Vixen, Teen Top, and AOA. It's just how they did last year was just so dumb because they waited so long to, like, make up their minds on, like, who was going to, you know, come to one in Jersey. But, you know, the fact that, you know, it's not until the end of June, so they had the time to get their shit together. But, um, I think I'm gonna make a video on like how to survive KCON. So you know, is it dying? Oh, <clears throat> so you know you so you know how to survive KCON because I figured the time is now to do so. So yeah, and I guess my last topic would be. Um, so Shower the Sixty, she had did her uh, chat video. And she had talked about this. Uh, podcast that she had listened to the other day and so I decided to give it a listen when I was on my way home from work it was really good podcast it was talking about the k-paparazzi um I know she talked about it a little bit in her video but I guess I'll just break it down for you so pretty much they started out you know with you know the beginning of k-pop you know how it started in the 90s and how like the last, the last five years it just blew up the past five years and the main but the main topic of the story was how 
the paparazzi was started in K-pop, which is in Korean, you know, in the Korean industry, period. Because it was, they didn't start this until a couple years ago. So there was no such thing as like, you know, there was no dispatch and all this other stuff years ago. It didn't, it didn't exist till like 2000, I'm going to say 2010, 2011. And what started it was when Jungyeon from Shiny was dating that actress, I can't remember her name, and how that caused a huge uproar. That's how it started. <clears throat> and the guy that broke the story is also the guy that started Dispatch. And they talked about that. They was talking, they had talked to a Korean American girl. She was a trainee for a company. They didn't, they didn't name names or anything, but she was a trainee for a couple of years. And I guess she decided to like leave because she's not in the group or whatever. But she was talking about how like she had to stay in a dorm with like six, seven other girls. And like they'd wake up four in the morning to go hiking. And then they eat breakfast, which consisted of lettuce, which is like, what? They go high, like, why would you, okay. I, I still don't understand how the hell they do shit over there when it's some this whole training process. It's like, why would you eat after you go hiking? But whatever. And then you get them lettuce. Okay. And then she was saying how they went through, like, singing classes, dancing cla classes. And um, they also had a class called, like, humble classes. So someone would come to the dorm and, like, teach them how to bow respectfully and stuff like that and then they also talked about what happened with girls generation back in 08 when they had the black ocean now if you don't know what the black ocean is because i don't think it's ever happened since then so that's okay, so pretty much what happened this is when girls generation was pretty was like starting out if you don't know girls generation wasn't popular from the gate as if you don't know it took them a while to get where they are now. So in the beginning, no one was checking for them. And from what happened was, they were on like variety shows with like, you know, the bigger groups were like, Double <clears throat> S501, TVXQ, and Super Junior. And in some of these variety shows, the girls would be with these other groups. And I guess the fans weren't feeling the fact that they weren't they felt like they were being disrespectful to the older groups because they weren't like they didn't bow like a, they didn't do a deep bow to them and stuff like that because you know in k-pop you know so you know see what's the name of it what's the name of the word what's the word ma i don't know what you're trying to talk about I'm t you know what i mean when i'm talking about when um you're trying to be you're trying to show respect for like the higher ups i guess okay Sen seniority no mm. i don't know but either way that way you know they, they basically they felt like the girls weren't showing respect to their senior groups or whatever and but and, and then they thought and they felt that they were like kind of like flirting with them and stuff like that during the shows which is like okay whatever so what ends up happening this was during a dream concert i didn't know this so it was during the dream concert and y'all already know the dream concert is like korea's hugest show so they have like everyone that's, you know, that's out at the time. And they have, they try to get every act they can find to do the show. Like you, I think the show usually runs like a really long time, but they have in like, I forgot which stadium it is, but it's like this huge stadium of people. And if you ever watch the dream concerts, like it's broken up by fandom. So like you'll have like shiny, super junior, I can't say YG Art because I don't think YG Artists have done Dream Concerts before, but, you know, EXO and Beast and stuff like that, they'll break them up in, like, fandoms. And, you know, they have the light sticks. <clears throat> so, at this point, Super Junior performs, TVSQ performs, WS501 performs, it's all good. Girls' Generation comes, the place goes black, the place goes silent. So what ends up happening, Girls' Generation pretty much performed for a silent audience. Which, now I know people are like, what the hell does that mean? Now over here in the States, we don't have light sticks. I don't think. We only have like light sticks like that. So for the most part, the stadium's pretty dark except for people's like cell phones. So 
when I first heard about the Black Ultra, I didn't think it was a big deal, but being the fact when they broke it down that like, that just means that like, they don't like you, they don't fuck with you, pretty much. So that ended up unfortunately happening to Girls' Generation. I don't think a Black Ocean has happened ever since then. But so pretty much like the fandom of the groups band together to do this Black Ocean against Girls' Generation and they ended up pulling it off and that really sucked for them. But obviously, you know, as time went on, they gained in popularity. Now they're like the biggest girl group in K-pop. Um, so that was that. They talked about what happened with the start of the paparazzi. So pretty much the guy that started Dispatch, him and his team learned how to do the paparazzi from out here in the States. So like TMZ, The Sun from the UK, Daily News, The Post, like stuff like that. So what they did was they decided to give it a shot. So they decided to follow Jungyeon and the actress he was dating at the time for like a month to follow their pattern. And then one day they seen them out together. Basically, you're just like regular couple walking down the street at like three o'clock in the morning, holding hands, all that shit. And they took pictures and the pictures were like grainy and you can barely see them. So they decided to post the pictures anyway. In the beginning, nothing happened, but then I think later on the pictures blew up it went viral I think their like website crashed like everyone was trying to find out what was going on and what ends up happening is if you don't know Jung and the actress broke up because it just got too crazy like the showers were angry and they were angry at the girl and she got really got like the brunt of it like people really hated her like they threw garbage outside of her agency it got to the point where they had to break up because it just got so bad and i remember jungin was outside i think he was did a performance somewhere like he was literally in tears and he apologized which i feel is dumb as hell it was like you shouldn't have to apologize for being in a relationship but at the same time that's how they do over there. It's like they, you can't really date and cause you know, people feel like they're getting portrayed, blah, blah, blah. I still think it's dumb as shit, but that's pretty much how the, you know, the paparazzi in Korea started. And then after that, it was just like the floodgates opened. They were just doing scandals for like everybody. You know, of course, you know, Baekhyun and Taeyeon thing. Um, it was like Tekyon was spotted with Jessica like years back. So they were just like pumping out these scandals. But then they also talked about what happened to Ailey. So if y'all don't know what happened to Ailey, 2013, Ailey was pretty much, she was hot at the time. That's when she was starting to really get up there in popularity. And then y'all already know what happened. Her ex, that's the head of all K-pop went to dispatch try to sell the pictures of her um so the story of the pictures she was like 18 and she was approached by this guy to do like some for like a modeling company and he asked for like new pictures to you know see if her body fit the body type blah 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 come to find out it was a scam went to the police had the situation handled so I'm guessing she has sent pictures to her boyfriend at the time to let him know what happened. Well, years go by and he decides the boyfriend, mind you, they broke up at this point, decides he wants to sell the pictures to Dispatch. Dispatch didn't want the pictures because I guess he, they felt like there was like crossing a line. Like, th like I guess, it's, you know how over here, like they will go there. Like they will really like have you in like these shittiest situations out here but over there it's like they draw a line so so that's pretty much what happened so they didn't take the pictures but you already know all k-pop posted the pictures and instead of people being against Ailey they were with Ailey especially finding out the situation and like they lost 22,000 uh, followers on Twitter and all k-pop wasn't even able to like bounce back from that I don't think I don't go on all K-pop because of that, because that was just that was just messy as hell. Um, give me one second. 